Hi everyone. In this video I would like to explain to you in a simplified way how thunder and lightning occur. The weather situation is the device for the development of a thunderstorm. They are high pressure areas and low pressure areas. In a high pressure area the air moves downwards from the heights. It practically presses on the earth. Clouds are also pushed downwards. Clouds are nothing more than tiny drops of water or ice crystals. The deeper the cloud sinks, the warmer the air that surrounds the cloud. The ice crystals begin to melt and at some point the small water drops evaporate into invisible water vapor. Because of this we can usually see the sun in a high pressure area. In a low pressure area the air moves upwards. How do clouds come about? To do this we need the energy that the sun supplies. For example, the sun warms the water of a lake. With the energy of the sun, water evaporates into invisible water vapor. This water vapor rises into the low pressure area. The temperature of the air decreases with increasing altitude. At some point the invisible water vapor condenses into small water drops. A cloud forms. However, that's not enough for a thunderstorm. Storm clouds are very high. When water vapor becomes water, energy is released, the so-called condensation pour. The air around the drop of water becomes warm and warm air rises, as we know. There is an additional updraft. The water drops continue to rise, even to above the zero degree limit. Above the zero degree limit, the air has a temperature of below zero degree Celsius. The water drops turn into small ice crystals. When water turns into ice, energy is released again. This warms the air around the ice crystals and the updraft causes the ice crystals to rise further. In Germany, for example, thunderclouds can get up to 12 km high as a result of this process. Over this 12 km, the air does not get colder. As a result, the ice crystals no longer rise, but only spread to the sides. This leads to the typical anvil shape of a thundercloud. Some ice crystals combine and grow into larger hailstones. The hailstones have as many positive as negative charges. At some point, these hailstones are so heavy that they can no longer be held up by the updraft. They fall down. On the way down, the hailstones collide with small ice crystals that move upwards. During the collusions, negatively charged electrons are transferred from the small ice crystals to the hailstones. As a result, the hailstones are now negatively charged and the small ice crystals are positively charged. This process happens many, many times, so that the positively charged ice crystals accumulate in the cloud above and negatively charged hailstones in the cloud below. This creates a large difference in charge. Nature doesn't like excessive imbalances and the negative charges are now looking for a way to neutralize themselves with positive charges. This now creates lightning. Most lightning occurs within a cloud. Let's take a look at the lightning going towards the earth. The negative charges at the lower end of the cloud push electrons down in a tree, for example, as charges of the same name repel each other. The tree, which is now positively charged, now attracts the excess electrons from the cloud. Some electrons are now flowing through the air towards the tree. As a result, the air is heated extremely strongly at this point so that it glows. The lightning occurs. Due to the rapid rise in air temperature, the air also expands extremely quickly. This creates a pressure wave that reaches our ears and that we perceive as a loud bang. 